mindsetters. Welcome mindsetters to grade 11 maths. Today we're doing a show on actually analytical I'm, geometry. Analytical geometry. That's you see, that's why he's here. He's the teacher. That's John. And we'd like to say hello to our sponsors. Thank you for sponsoring the show, Liberty. And today we're gonna to be covering analytical geometry, which was done last week by Natasha, and we're doing it again this week with Mark, who's gonna be taking us through. So guys, please make sure that you send us all your questions relating to the topic. If you're lost in here, if you're having any difficulties, we'll get round to you at the end during the year. We'll eventually get to you if you are lost anywhere. And next week there won't be a show, but there will be revision on Saturday. So guys, make sure you guys are tuned in. So right, we're gonna go with the analytical geometry. Fantastic. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, to grade 11 mathematics. Today we're here with Mark. And guys, remember, I still have a Casio calculator that I need to get off my, my hands. So make sure you guys post those questions to Facebook, and we'll be announcing the winner tomorrow on the page. So you guys need to watch that page. And then right now, we're going to actually have Mark, who's going to take us through the lesson today. And we're both excited, because it's the first time working together. And Mark, take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ty. It's good to be back on the show. Grade 11s, hello. I'm usually working with the grade 12, so this is a new experience for me and hopefully for you. Hopefully you've woken up and you're ready to do some analytical geometry. Now tonight's show is mostly a revision show. So I'm going to be taking through what Natasha and Yuval have done in the last few weeks. And I'm going to take you through a couple of different challenge questions. But each one of my questions is going to help you unravel the different formulae that you are given on the matric formula sheet. So remember, in any test or exam, you've given, you are given the formulae. So it's just how do you use them? How do you apply your knowledge to try and do some of the problem solving stuff? And that's going to be my emphasis tonight. So let's go and have a look at some of the questions that I've put up for you. And of course, the very first formula that I'm going to do is I'm looking at the midpoint formula. So if you've ever got a line segment, this formula which says add the two outer x's, divided by two, it'll give me the midpoint x value. And if I do exactly the same with the y, so I add the two y's together and divide by two, it gives me the middle y value. But not every question is given as beautifully like that. And sometimes you have to think and you have to solve for a different unknown, which is what I've done here. So let's open up and let's get to my question. And my first question for the evening says, solve for x and y if you are given a coordinate negative 1 y, which is the midpoint. So think carefully, you're given part of the midpoint and the y value is missing of the midpoint. And it's a midpoint of the line segment 0, negative 2 and x8. So we know the best place to start, according to Mary Poppins, is right at the very beginning, a very good place to start. And when you are doing analytical, my advice is that you always draw a little sketch. Because the sketch enables you to see all of the information in a picture. And we all know that we love to see pictures, okay? The pictures tell us so much more than all this written stuff. So what I have over here is a line segment. And I'm going to now put the information on my line segment. So it says to me that negative 1 y is the midpoint. So go to the middle. And this coordinate is negative 1 y. Then I know it's the midpoint of the line segment, and it doesn't matter too much which side I put things. So this side would be 0, negative 2, and the other side over here would then be x8. Now don't panic or phone a mechanic when your unknown is in different places. The midpoint formula is the midpoint formula, which says you add the two outer x's, Okay, these are the outer two x's, divide by 2, and that gives you the midpoint. And then we go and do the two outer y's, add them together, and that gives me the midpoint. But the beauty of the midpoint formula is you can deal with the x and the y separately. They're totally independent. And let me show you how I'm going to do it by using the formula. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two outer x's, so I know that I'm going to have 0 plus x divided by 2. So if you add your two outer x's together and divide by 2, that gives me the midpoint value. Okay, that's just give me a little Mickey Mouse equation which I can then go and solve. And in terms of this Mickey Mouse equation, I know that that 0 plus x is just x over 2, and so I can cross multiply the 2, and so I'm going to get x is equal to negative 2. In a similar way, I'm now going to go and I'm going to go and solve for my y. So let's go back to my information. Don't worry where your unknown is. Solving the equation will unravel the unknown. To solve for the midpoint, we add the two outer y's. So the two outer y's are negative 2 
plus 8 divided by 2. So it's really the average of the two y's. Add the two outer y's, divide by 2, and that always gives you the midpoint value. And so we notice that my unknown now is just somewhere else, but we needn't panic. And so if I work out the top, which will give me 6 over 2, okay, which is the same as 3, which then is my value for y. So my first question, I'm just trying to get you to settle down. When you are solving, don't panic if your unknown is in a different position. Write the formula with all of the unknown or the given information in. And then go and solve for your unknown. And because you are grade 11, your understanding of equations is really good, so you should be able to solve for unknowns in different positions. Let's look at another one of the formulae. Oopsie. So over here, we're going to look at the distance formula. That looks a little bit more complicated, but again, it is given to you on the metric formula sheet. So you shouldn't have to memorize. It's about how do you use it, how do you apply it, and how do you think when you're using it. And if we just look a little bit at the formula, the distance is always the square root of whatever answer I get under the root. So you have to get an answer under the root. You can never square root individually. And so what it says to me is I found the difference between my two x's of my coordinate, square that answer. Find the difference between the two y values, square that answer, work out what's underneath, and then square root. But just as I gave a curveball in the first question, I'm going to give another curveball here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find a different unknown. So let's look at what I've put here for you. And my question over here says determine the values of y. If the distance between the point negative 7 y and negative 3 4 is root 80. Think about that at home and hopefully you're going to jot it down so you can try it yourself. But as I said before, you want to get the information into your sketch so that you can now unravel it and everything is there in the form of a picture. So let me write down. So I just draw a little sketch showing a line segment, but I know that the one point is negative 7 y. So this is negative 7 y and the other coordinate is negative 3 4 again it doesn't have to be overly accurate you just want the information like this point is to the left of that negative 3 and so I draw to the left so I try and get the information in the correct positions relative to each other but there's not a lot of sketching going on now I know that the distance of this line segment is going to be the square root of 80 now please, just calm down and relax. It's like a Saturday night with your boyfriend or girlfriend sitting on the couch. Just let things happen slowly. So I'm now going to go and unravel this thing. And I know that because they're talking about the distance, I'm going to use the distance formula. And the distance formula says to me, so let's go and write this out here. It says, find x1 or x2 minus x1, and then take y2 minus y1. So, I'm going to just go through and say minus 7 minus negative 3. So minus 7 minus negative 3. And that whole thing is squared. Plus then I must find the difference between the two y's. So it's going to be this y2 minus that y1, which is going to be y minus 4. And that whole thing is squared. But please remember now that I've got to square root this whole answer. Because that's what the formula says to me. So I've done nothing fancy. I'm just putting into the formula and I'm going to unravel and see where my unknown is. And I know that the distance of this line segment is going to be the square root of 80. Now my goal, so my overriding goal is to go and find y. Which was the question anyway, go and determine the value of y. But now I've got a target. And what has happened is this is no longer really an analytical question. I've used analytical to create an equation. From now on, I'm just going to solve an equation. I needn't to have known a single thing about analytical after the first line. So I'm going to simplify slowly and do one little step at a time. First thing that I can do is square both sides. Because both sides contain a square root. So if I square both sides, I can get rid of the roots. So square both sides. And so on the right hand side, I'm going to see 80 makes it a lot nicer when I'm going to go and solve. And then here on the left hand side, minus 7 minus negative 3 is minus 7 plus 3, which is minus 4 squared, plus then y minus 4 squared. 
And I know that every single grade 11 in the country at this stage has been solving this kind of quadratic equation from the beginning of the year. So we know how to solve this, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time unraveling this. So the minus 4 squared gives me 16. And whilst many of you probably want to square this bracket, I've got a shortcut. And you should have recognized this shortcut in class that I can rather leave it in a root and take the 16 over. So when I take the 16 over, 80 minus 16 is going to give me 64. And that's a relief because that's a perfect square. And now I can square root both sides. And so when I square root both sides, I know that y minus 4 is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 64. Okay, and the square root of 64 is 8. And so my answer then is going to be y is equal to 4 plus or minus 8. And that gives me two nice answers. 4 plus 8 is going to be 12, or 4 minus 8 is going to be negative 4. And so there we can go and solve for our two unknowns. Okay, again, distance formula. If you're solving for an unknown, don't panic. Put it into the formula. Unravel the formula in the way that you've always solved equations. So some of you at home are saying, oh, but Mark, couldn't I have multiplied out? Of course you can. Go and check at home, multiply out, create a trinomial. You get exactly the same answers. My way is maybe just a bit quicker because I'm on air and time is limited. So we're going to look at the next one. And the next one talks about the gradient formula. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up on screen so you can think about it and possibly try this just off air. And I'm going to show you some questions where we use our knowledge of gradient. Now, I've created three questions. We're not going to have enough time to do all three, so I'm going to do the first two with you. Now, this is a very typical kind of question. And this question says to us, calculate the value of an unknown in each case. So we're presented with three different scenarios. And so what they're do doing in this question is we're talking about parallel, and I know you're all shouting at home saying, parallel, same gradient. Okay, so that's important. And then we talk about perpendicular. And you should also know from the metric formula sheet that we talk about the product of the two gradients is negative 1. And we also talk about collinear. But I'm going to wait for that. And we'll just talk briefly, but I'm not going to solve that. So for you at home, I want you to quickly write this down. We want to solve for x. And so just get down your four coordinates. So the coordinate for A is negative 2, 3. The coordinate for B is 1, 4. The coordinate for C is negative 4, 1. And D is x, 4. And so straight away you know that that is where your unknown is. Now they are saying to me, calculate x if AB is parallel to CD. So the first one is saying if AB is parallel to CD. And the second one is saying if AB is perpendicular to CD. So I want you to just see how you can use gradient. Now remember, in the exam, grade 11 exam, grade 12 exam, no one is saying gradient. You need to recognize through the words or the symbols parallel, that that's telling you gradient. And perpendicular, that's telling you it's a relationship to gradient. And when we see the word collinear, meaning on the same line, again you're talking gradients of line segments. All right, so get this down. Try this in, the, in a quick break. Um, Ty, I'm going to hand over to you because I think we're going to go to a short break to allow students to try this, okay? Definitely. So guys, again, make sure you post those questions on Facebook, on Twitter, if you're having any issues, if you're lost anywhere. And I'm glad to see some of our regulars there. Kashifa, Anele, Azaya, Mohammed. I see you guys. Apparently, you, you bear a striking resemblance to A.B. de Villiers. I don't know if you really related. Oh, gee whiz. How to bowl a maiden over. That would be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, we'll see you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, to Grade 11 Mathematics. I'm hoping you can, well, me and Mark are having a little game here. I hope you can do the spot the difference kind of thing. But anyway, guys, yeah, I hope you got your pens and pads out. You're making notes. Make sure you hit me up on facebook.com forward slash learn extra and on Twitter at learn extra. And guys, don't forget tomorrow, very important, the Mazoi campaign is coming out tomorrow. So you guys need to check that out. It's really inspiring. This guy got five distinctions. So you see what Mindset can help you do. And I'm going to pass over to Mark. Thank you very, very much. Welcome back. 
We had a question off air on the Twitter or the Facebook page saying distance formula, won't you remind us about the distance formula? We are going to come back in a challenge question later on. So whoever called in, we're going to come back to distance. But I want to remind you at home that the distance, the gradient, and the midpoint are essentially grade 10 concepts. So we should know those really thoroughly. When I get to my next page, that's where we get to the grade 11 concept. Then uh, there was someone else that said collinear points. I'm going to come back and I'll just briefly touch on collinear points. Okay, we had this question here which said, can I work out the value of x if AB is parallel to CD? So we go and look at our AB de Villiers and we go and find the gradient of AB which says find the change in y. So it's going to be 4 minus 3 over 1 minus. Now be very careful. It's so easy to make mistakes when you're finding negatives and you're subtracting negatives and that kind of stuff. Do one little thing at a time. So on the top, 4 minus 3 is just going to give me 1. 1 minus negative 2 is 1 plus 2, which is going to be 3. And that's important, and that is my answer for the gradient of AB. So now I go to the gradient of CD. Now, again, the fact that you have your unknown here, don't change the way that you approach it. Just unravel the gradient in the normal way. So the gradient says I'm going to take the change in Y. So it's Y2 minus Y1. So it's going to be 4 minus 1. Underneath, go in the same order. If you start with the 4, you have to start with the x. x minus negative 4. And so on the top, I'm going to get 3. On your bottom, you're going to then get x plus 4. Now, you can't find out that gradient at this stage. That's just the gradient that is written in terms of x. But it's the question which has a relationship and that relationship enables me to create an equation. So when I look very carefully, because they are parallel, that means to me that it's the same gradient, which then means that I can go and equate. I create an equation to solve for an unknown and then I'm going to go and solve. So let me just pull the screen down a little bit. So the gradients are the same. I knew that because they said parallel, that's the key word. And so I'm going to say, well, 1 over 3 is equal to 3 over x plus 4. Now, at this stage, this is a, a linear equation, so I expect all the viewers at home to be okay with what I'm doing. I would cross multiply because I'm multiplying everything by the LCD, which means on the left-hand side, I'm going to see 1 multiplied by x plus 4. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to see 3 multiplied by 3 because that denominator goes across, that denominator goes across. And so I'm going to get x plus 4 is equal to 9. And so then I'm going to get x is equal to 5. And so that is my first answer, x is equal to 5. Now let's look at the second part, because that makes it a bit more interesting. And in the second part, what we're doing here is we're talking about perpendicular. And I said to you, well, perpendicular just says to me that the product of the two gradients is negative 1. And again, the key concept is I'm talking gradients. All right, you want to multiply the gradients, make it equal to negative 1. There are other ways of doing this. There might be quicker ways where we sometimes talk about the negative inverse, but I'm just going to stick with the basics for tonight. So we know that if um, AB is perpendicular to CD, so for part 2, they said that AB is perpendicular to CD, what that means then is if I take the gradient of AB and I multiply it by the gradient of CD, that answer is negative 1. Now don't start again because the gradients were calculated earlier on. So the one gradient is a third and the other gradient is 3 over x plus 4. Okay, so it's 1 over 3 multiplied by 3 over x plus 4 and that whole thing is equal to negative 1. And again, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm just going to be solving an equation. The nice thing is, at this stage, we should see that this 3 at the bottom would cancel with the 3 at the top. And so when I go and multiply, I'm going to get 1 over x plus 4 is equal to negative 1. And now I can take this denominator and multiply it to the other side. And so I'm going to say 1 is equal to negative x plus 4 which is negative x minus 4 is equal to 1. I'm going to swap the x to the left because I just like to see positive x's. I'm going to take the 1 over and x is equal to negative 5.
So again, we're talking gradients because we're talking perpendicular. The product of the two gradients is equal to negative 1. And so I'm just going to talk that third concept, but I'm not going to talk about it for long at all. Because again, when we talk collinear, that's grade 10. And so if I was to solve for x, and we're talking about collinear, collinear means the same line, it is talking about gradients. And so what I would do is I'd find the gradient from B to C. So that is the gradient of that line segment. Then I would find the gradient from C to D. And then all that you do is you would equate those two gradients. So I found the gradient BC. I found the gradient CD, which I found earlier on anyway. And then I make them equal to each other. Because collinear means that the gradients are equal to each other. But I need to move on. So let's go look at my next page. And so for those viewers at home who've missed the last couple of weeks, first of all, where have you been? This is grade 11. This is the only new thing that we introduce in grade 11 which is the angle of inclination or the inclination formula. And so there is a wonderful way in which we link an angle and a gradient using tan. Okay, so trigonometry actually features in your analytical geometry a little bit. And so I just wanted to make that point clear to you. When we are playing around, okay, and I'm going to go and find the angle of inclination. This angle there is theta. And we say that we always measure in an anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so we're going back in time. And we always measure from the x-axis going left. And we say it's going from the positive x-axis. So here, when the gradient is positive, if the slope is up, your theta will always be acute. And that is quite important to remember. However, if I've got an obtuse angle, that means that the gradient is negative. Or conversely, we can say if the gradient is a negative, then the angle of inclination, which is always measured, remember, from the positive x-axis across to your line, this angle will actually be obtuse. And that's where you need to use a little bit of knowledge of trigonometry. And if you're taking an angle to a second quadrant, sometimes you're going to add 180 to a negative answer. Or your teacher might have taught you some interesting tricks. But I want you to just remember that when we're talking about tan of theta and the gradient, the angle can give me the gradient. If I know the angle, I just press tan of the angle, and it will give me the gradient. Or if you have the gradient, we can go back and find the angle. But it's very easy for me to ramble. Let's go and look at an example to see if we can understand exactly what I'm talking about. So I've got a diagram here. So I'm going to read. And the way that you are meant to do an exam question is always take the story and read the story. Because sometimes there are important things contained in the story. But always relate whatever you're reading back down to your diagram. So it says to me, in the diagram below, a line segment joins P to Q. Okay, so they're telling me that I'm going from P across to Q. And it makes an angle of 63.5 degrees. Okay, I can see that angle. And I'm immediately thinking angle of inclination. Because they've given me an angle and they're talking about a line segment. So be aware of what could be coming up. Then they also say a second line parallel to PQ. And I can see the parallel lines. And the question really, all of you at home should be saying, well, why is it parallel? Why do they talk parallel? And the answer is that the gradients are the same. So I'm already unraveling a question before I even get to find out what they're asking me because I'm reading with meaning. I'm trying to understand what is being said to me over here. So let's now go down to the questions. Okay, so I'm going to keep the diagram on our screen. And it says, determine the gradient of the line segment PQ correct to the nearest whole number. So I want to find this gradient. I don't have the point P. I have got the point Q, but I don't have the point P. But what I can do is I can use my angle of inclination. So remember that M is equal to the tan of your angle. And so when I'm finding the gradient, I will just put in my theta. And so it's going to be the tan of 63,5. And now I can just press that on a calculator. So let's pull up my trusty friend. Okay, and I'm going to pull up my calculator. And so I just press the tan 
of 63.5. And press equals and voila, Bob's your auntie. And they said to me to the nearest whole number, so I must look very carefully, the nearest whole number, well it's going to be 2. Okay, so my gradient M, let's just pull up a pen quickly, my gradient M is approximately equal to 2, I've rounded off to the nearest whole number. Now, let's look at my second question. My second question says, write down the equation of the line which goes through PQ. Well, you should know from grade 9, when you first started straight lines, that the straight line equation is y equals mx plus c. But if you've got y equals mx plus c, you've just found out the gradient. y equals 2x plus c. Now your c stands for your y-intercept. And if you look closely on your diagram, the y-intercept is given to you. You have it. So I can actually take away my c, and I can now go and put in the y-intercept value, which is 6. All right? So that there is my answer to 2, because now I've got the equation of the straight line with that angle of inclination. So I've got the gradient and passing through that point. And then let's go and have a look and see what 3 is saying to me. 3 says find the equation of the line which goes through the origin. So it's really that line equation there. Now you should have recognized earlier that because they are parallel, they have the same gradient. Because they have the same gradient, I've got very much the same equation, y equals 2x. So it's always y equals mx. But what about my c value? If you look closely, this line is passing through the origin. And so your c is 0. And so there we go. That is the equation for the third one. So it's a nice illustration of the basics. But now I'm going to take you to a real challenge question, a nasty question, where we're going to have to use this concept of the angle of inclination and trigonometry to solve something else. Okay, so we get a long story. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put up the story and I'm going to ask you to take down the diagram and then we're going to go to a little break and then we're going to come back and see if we can solve it. So I'm given three vertices. Point A, 1, 4. Point B, negative 2, negative 2. And point C, 4, 1 are vertices of a triangle. Now before you even carry on, draw that. Get an idea of what it looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect, but draw a sketch. Then it says, and there's a big hint, draw a neat sketch. Calculate the magnitude. Magnitude is just another word for size. Find the size of A, B, C. And when you see that little copy, that hat on the B, that's telling me it's an angle. So I'm going to be solving for an angle, and it's going to be rounded to one decimal place. So you draw a sketch. Now I've drawn a little sketch, and I've got it there on screen. And I hope that you can see that. So you don't actually really need anything else. Once you've put in the point C, which is 4, 1, you've put in the point A, which is 1, 4, and you've put in the point B, negative 2, negative 2, we are trying to find that angle B. Think how you would get there. Okay? Because the angle of inclination story only gives me the angle okay, between the x-axis and your line. And it links to gradient. So very often when you get these questions where there is an angle somewhere else, you know that you have to take your information on a little journey. So pack your picnic baskets, take your putt course, we're going to take our angles on a journey and we're going to go to the angle where I want to end up. And so that's what I'm going to do after the break. So quickly take down the little sketch and then think about how you're going to go and solve to take your information to B using the angle of inclination. Okay, so C is 4, 1, A is 1, 4, and B is negative 2, negative 2. Ty, do you think they've had enough time to get this down? I think so. A lot of the kids are a bit worried that you're a bit fast, Mark, so if we could just slow it down. Just sure. Just Most definitely. I, I just know that we've had two weeks on mm. this and a year on this already. Mm. So I'm just trying to, this is the first time we should have been doing anything new in grade 11. Mm. So I, I am aware that I'm going quickly, but in an hour there's not a lot that you can really cover unless you're going to go quickly. All right, so everyone has to run with me tonight. So guys, you understand why we're going a little bit fast. You just need to get through a lot of work. So make sure if you are lost, guys, please, please, put it on the Facebook page. Talk to each other. That's why the platform is there. Help each other out. I see Kashif is already on it. I see Matokonolo. Sorry if I got your name wrong, but I see you guys are on it. And guys, 
Make sure you guys stay tuned. Get your pads out, get your pens out, get ready for this challenge question. I'll be looking for those answers. Remember, I still have a Casio calculator to give away. So we'll see you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. We're doing grade 11 mathematics. Again, I want to send a quick shout out to Liberty for sponsoring the show. And I'm actually going to, I hope you guys are paying attention. So I hope you've noticed something a little different. I don't know, mm -hmm. guys paying attention. So we want, I want to see who's, who's been paying attention, who's watching. And I'm actually going to hand back to Mark, who's going to continue the show. Yeah. If you notice very closely, Ty's wearing a wonderful shade of lipstick. But when we get back to him, you'll see just now. Now, do not adjust your screen. You might say, Mark, you're on a different question, and suddenly we're at a different um, page. We're going to do something interesting tonight. So I've got a challenge question up there, and what I'm going to ask you to do is to quickly jot it down. But don't panic, because almost everything is in the picture. We're going to put this up. Okay, we're going to ask you to try this. I'm going to go back and do the other question, and then we're going to take a call alive tonight. So we're going to get someone live on air during the show, and that person is going to talk to us about solving this. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't get it right. The key thing is that we just interact and get a bit of dialogue, and we can talk about how we're going to unravel this question. So let's just have a look and see what's there. It says, in the diagram below, E is the point negative 1, 3. Look very carefully because it's in the context of a picture. E is negative 1, 3, and is the midpoint of the line segment DF. So it's the midpoint. Then they give me the point D, which is negative 5P. And then they give me F, which is A7. Okay, so you've got a midpoint, and you can see there's an unknown P and an unknown A. Then they give me the point G, and what they do is they say G is K2, and it's a point in the first quadrant. Now that would be important. It's a point in the first quadrant. And the length EG. Okay, so now I'm going to help you just a little bit because that's something you should be putting on your diagram. This length EG is going to be 5 root 2 units. So the length from E to G is 5 root 2. And so basically what we're saying to you is solve for A. Okay, so there's your little a. Solve for p and go and solve for k. And it doesn't matter what order. I mean, my questions say go and find a and p first and then go and find k. So look very carefully. We give you e and it's a midpoint. That's a huge clue because that's telling you the formula to use. Okay, and so we're going to go and solve for p and a. And then what happens here is we've given you the length of eg. The length EG, the distance EG is 5 root 2. Again, the fact that I'm talking distance or length is a massive clue as to what formula we're going to use. All right, so please, will you take that down? I know that when I go back to my other question, my producer is going to put a number up on screen. You're going to phone that number. You're going to go through to our studio, and then one of those core operators is going to patch you through to me. They might try to sell you something first, tell them you're not interested. You're just doing the maths questions. All right. So now, I'm going to go back to our question before we went off air. And so we come back to this question, which is a real nasty challenge question. So look what I'm doing here. And if you look closely, I've put something in my diagram that wasn't there before. And so what I've done is I've put a little x. And I want you to realize that that angle there is x. And if I go along and I measure, okay, from the x-axis, this angle as I go across there would be my y, okay? And so each of those are the angles of inclination. But you need to know that you are taking x and you're taking y on a journey, a beautiful expedition to try and get them to be. So I'm going to help you with one last little thing, and I'm going to remind you of some of the knowledge from grade 8. Yes, grade 8. And that is when we've got two straight lines that intersect with each other, that angle x there is actually that angle x inside because they are vertically opposite angles. So now look what I'm going to do. I've put some stuff on my diagram. My examiner is going to be able to see what I'm doing. And this isn't easy. So I'm expecting ta to get lots of people saying, oh my word, this is complicated. Well, I've thrown you in the deep end. This is the only new thing in grade 11, and I've thrown you in to do something really nasty. 
So I know that if I'm playing with a triangle, which is this triangle over here, if I'm playing with a triangle, angle B plus angle X, so that angle B and that angle X is going to be equal to Y. And you might say, why is it equal to Y? Well, that is because we've got the exterior angle of a triangle. Okay, so look very carefully. The angle X plus the angle B is equal to that Y. And so when I go and solve, well, then I know that B is the same as Y minus X. And so now I've given myself a target. Now I know that I need to try and find out, well, what is angle Y and what is angle X? Because if I can find those two angles, well, then I've got it. So I'm going to leave some space and I'm going to try and find angle Y. Now there is Y. And we know that Y is the angle of inclination. And we know that the angle of inclination links to the gradient. So we know, okay, that the tan of Y is going to be equal to my gradient of that line segment. Tan of the angle is the gradient, which is the gradient of AB. Now I'm just going to go and find the gradient of AB. So it would be the change in Y. So this Y is 4. So it's going to be 4 minus negative 2. All divided by the change in X, which would have been 1 minus negative 2. Okay, so I'm just going to go a little bit higher. And so over there, 4 minus negative 2 is going to be 6. 1 minus negative 2 is going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3. Okay, and so now I know that Y is actually going to be the arctan, the tan minus 1 of 2. Now you might say to me, oh, okay, Mark, press that on the calculator, let's get an answer. And I can. I can go and get an answer, but I don't want to. Not yet. And I'll just show you, because if I go and press that, so if I'm going to press the shift tan, which we call the arc tan of 2, it gives me an ugly answer. And I, I don't want to actually write all those decimal places. But if you really want to, you can save that. And what I'd do is I'd store that. And because my angle's called Y, I'm actually going to store. So you press the shift store button and I'm going to store it into Y. So it's a nice place to put your answer, especially if it correlates with your variable. So if I need that later on, I can get it. But now I'm going to go back. So I've managed to find a relationship involving angle Y. Now I'm going to find a relationship involving the angle X. And so I know that X is the angle that is linked with the gradient of BC. So look what I do again. I say that the tan of X, just get a pen here, the tan of X is equal to the gradient, I've lost it, of BC. And so if I just work it out, so the Y, it would be Y1. So I've got 1 minus negative 2. And so when I take my X, it's going to be 4 minus negative 2. And so on top, I'm going to get 3 over 6, which then is a half. And so I know that my X value is the tan negative 1. So we say the shift tan, which we prefer to then call it as the arc tan of a half. And again, if I wanted to, I could put on my calculator. I could do the shift tan of a half, 0.5, press equals, and that gives me an answer. And again, I don't want to round off yet. And if I want to, I can store it. So watch what I do again. I go to the shift, because that's telling me to store. And I'm storing it. This was an X. So I'm just going to store it into X. And it's a, a wonderful way of putting your answers okay, into the variable which correlates with what you're finding. But now, the way that I go and find this Y minus X is to then have said, okay, let's just put it now on a calculator. One time, Shushan, angle B is going to be the arctan of 2 minus the arctan of a half. And that then is going to give me my angle. And so now instead of saying the y minus x, I can type it all one time. So let's see what we get. So I'm going to say the shift tan of 2 minus that shift tan of a half.
close your brackets, press equals, and that's 36.86. And if I remember correctly, my answer was to one decimal place, which is going to be 36.9. Okay, so I can write down that answer as 36.9. Oopsie. And there we go. So please remember, this is a very ugly question. But what you've got to do is say, if I'm finding an angle somewhere in my diagram that's not on the x-axis, just relax like I've been doing all the way through. Find the angle of inclination of one line. And remember, if you don't have the gradient, find the gradient. Then you do the shift tan and it gives you the angle. Then find any other angle. And then what you do is you take those angles in to the shapes that you get. And you'll always get some triangle. Some others might have said, hey, couldn't I have taken the Y in there? It will be 180 minus that Y. And you're playing with a triangle. Now, we're going to rush to an ad break so that when we return, we have enough time to play with our challenge question with our caller. Hopefully, we do have a caller. So I'm going to hand over to you, Ty, so we can go to a quick break. All right. So guys, make sure you get calling. Dial that number. It's posted on the page. So if you want to talk to us live, make sure you call us up and we'll chat to you just after this break. See you soon. And welcome back, Mindsetters, to Learn Extra Live. We've got grade 11 mathematics with Mark today. And actually, I'm going to hand over to Mark because we've actually got an exciting thing happening. Live, we've got a caller. So Mark? Thank you very much. I believe we do have a caller. Hello, caller. Are you there? Okay, I'm waiting to hear, but apparently we've got Cine Tembo who's phoned in, and I'd love to know where Cine Tembo is calling us from. But while we're waiting for Cine Tembo to get patched to Maria, is Cine Tembo, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, I'm not getting her, unfortunately. I'm feeling the vibe, but I'm not hearing the voice, which is important. Okay, so I'm going to look at this question, and if we can, if my producer can patch it through to me, that'll be great. Cindy Timber, how are you doing? Yes, I'm here, but I'm you hearing two voices. You need to talk to me, sweetie pie. Okay. If, Cindy Timber, if you can just turn your TV volume right down and just listen to me like I'm the only man in the world that counts, okay, then I'll be able to solve okay, I'm gonna maths try. Problems. So turn the volume down and start talking to me. I'll be listening. As soon as you talk, I can start helping you. So I've got the sketch over here, and what is important is they've given me a midpoint. And so we know from earlier on that if you've got a midpoint, create a midpoint formula. So you're going to take the midpoint formula and then you're going to go and do something with it. And please remember that the X's and the Y's can work independently of each other. So I take my X's and I know that if I add the two outer X's, it would be A plus minus 5. And you might be saying, why do I put plus minus 5? Just because I'm trying to show the viewers at home that if you take your one X, add the other X, it's X1 plus X2 all over 2. That always gives me the midpoint. But the thing is, I've yeah. been given the midpoint. My unknown just happens to be there. So, Cindy Timber, hopefully you're saying, hey, Mark, that's just a different version of your question from earlier on. And I'm recognizing it, and this is becoming a piece of cake. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So, now I'm just going to keep solving. At the top, I get A minus 5. But at the same time, I can take my 2 and multiply across. That gives me minus 2. So I get on the other side, minus two. minus two, and that will give me three. So I've got my A value so far. But of course, there was more to this. So let's go back and see where we're at. Okay, so we're going to go and solve for P. Cindy Temba, my producer says you are there. So please talk to me. I'm feeling rejected, hurt, and unloved. <laughs> Okay, we've just lost her, unfortunately. So, Cindy Timber, you're just going to have to follow. You would have been the first person to call in on our live show, and it's not going to happen. Okay. So, I'll carry on. I'm going to add the two Ys. So, I'd add the outer Y1 plus Y2, divided by 2, and that gives me the midpoint. And then I'm just going to go and unravel as per normal, because I want to get P, so cross multiply. P plus 7 would be 2 times 3, which is 6. Take the 7 across, and so you're going to get P is negative 1. And that's not too difficult. And that, I would say, is a pretty normal kind of question to expect at grade 11. Now, the second part, and that's where you had to make a connection. 
is to realize that EG was a distance and they tell me that the distance EG was 5 root 2. Now my producer said to me get a hurry up so I'm going to get a hurry up because I listen to him all the time and over here we're going to go and solve I just need to see those coordinates so I'm finding the distance so it's a change in X so just because I need all the information on screen I'm going to scribble on the side so it's K minus negative 1 so if it's K minus negative 1 it becomes K plus 1 or squared and then it's going to be if I've started off with the K it's going to be 2 minus 3 or squared and then that would be equal to okay this distance 5 root 2 now I hope you have a color TV so you can see what's going on now the distance formula says to me square root that is equal to the distance now I can fly to the end because I'm just going to go and solve for my unknown. So I'm going to square both sides and when I square this on the right hand side you can check on a calculator but with thirds you square the 5 which is 25, you square the root 2 which is 2, 25 times 2 is giving me 50. Inside I've got k plus 1 all squared and 2 minus 3 is negative 1 which when I square is going to be plus 1. Now I'm very close to the end. Okay, So I'm going to say well k plus 1 all squared is actually going to be 50 minus 1 and again like earlier in the show there's a quicker way of getting to the answer by just having a square equals to something square root both sides k plus 1 is going to be plus or minus the square root of 49 and so then I get k is negative 1 plus or minus 7 and so I must just put my answers minus 1 plus 7 is going to be 6 or minus 1 minus 7 is minus 8 and if I stop there I would lose a few marks. I've done it beautifully and I'm close to the end but I remember that in the question there was just some subtle wording so if I just rush back to the top it said to me somewhere about K, K is a point in the first quadrant which means that K always has to be positive if it's in the first quadrant so that would mean that I'd have to reject this answer because it's first quadrant only okay so just be careful read your questions very carefully and I know that that's taken me to the end of my part I've got to hand over to Ty so he has just enough time to say goodbye to all the grade 11 so cheers from me all right Guys, grade 11s, I hope this was a helpful lesson. I hope you guys are writing notes. I hope you guys are helping each other out. Make sure you guys talk on the Facebook page. If you have any questions, if you're lost, make sure you talk to each other on there. Make sure you guys chat. That's why the platform is there. I want to send a quick shout out to Liberty. And thank you, by the way, Indy sends her love. And yes, guys, we'll see you next for grade 12 mathematics. Cheers.